Hey everybody, I'm back with something that I probably should have done a long time ago. I want to test, uh, this is the Ashen Manticore by Artisan Guild, uh, and it, I hollowed the middle piece here, the body. So I used Cheetahbox when I did it, and we all know Cheetahbox seems pretty terrible at hollowing, creates all kind of bad internal geometry where you then need to go in. I had to go back in and add a ton of supports. So I decided to finally test, and I know just, you know, from what I've seen anecdotally, uh, you know, Prusa Slicer feels like it's better than Chidu Box for sure. And Formware, which is a, a paid, you know, 135, I don't know what I paid. Uh, it's, it's a paid one. It also seems better. But I never actually tested. And I figured, let me test this stuff out and give you guys the results. So this is only going to be the test on one model. I'm going to continue to do more tests, but I'm sure it'll wind up pretty much like the results of this one. So this is going to be a super quick video. And for the people with the short attention spans, Prusa Slicer did the best. So if, if you don't want to watch my explanation or see how I did it or what I actually did to compare, Prusa Slicer uh, was significantly better than the firmware software and way, way better as I thought it would be than Chidu Box, which was by far the worst. So that, that's the quick hitter. If you're going to hollow something, use Prusa Slicer, which is free. So use Prusa Slicer if you're going to hollow and then you can export that as an STL and then go into Chidu Box if that's where you want to do your support. So I know some people like to do their supports in, in Prusa Slicer. And by the way, I keep trying their auto supports and uh, it doesn't work that well for me still. So even though I've tried a bunch of different settings, but that's neither here nor there. But this is only about hollowing. For hollowing, Prusa Slicer is your best bet. So for everyone who wants to see how it's actually done, if you've never used Prusa Slicer before, I'm going to take you through the steps. I'm going to show you what I did in Chidu Box firmware and Prusa Slicer. So you'll, you'll learn how to hollow in all of those programs because it, it's not quite intuitive. Just open up the program and do it. You have to kind of know where to click um, in. You have to be able to uh, turn off supports in some of them. So stick with me and watch that. I'll show you what I did. And then you can also see the actual results. I believe I'm going to go roughly off my memory right now. You'll see it later in the video. I think the islands that were created by hollowing. Uh, well, okay, let me back up one second. The model, I didn't put supports anywhere. I wanted the test to be the same, so I didn't want to test the auto supports on any of these programs. So I put no supports on and just hollowed. The uh, Chidu Box version had over 400 islands detected by the Photon Validator. The firmware was way better at, I think, around 190 to 195 islands detected by a Photon Validator. And then uh, Prusa was by far the best, which was down at like 170 islands detected. So... Uh, how many of those are internal, external, I don't know. But obviously, all the extra ones are internal. So that means Chitterbox was creating like 200 extra islands inside the model, which is insanely bad. Uh, the other thing is, for those of you who don't know how to use the Photon Validator, you're going to see how to do that as well. So you get a little bonus lesson in here on how to use the Photon Validator to check your models for islands, even if you don't have a Photon. So stay tuned. We're going to jump right into Chitterbox. And we're going to go through all these results. It's only going to take eh, five, six minutes. So if you're interested, check it out and you'll see you know, what the differences were. Thanks. So what I first did was drop the body in. I rotated it so it fit on the plate because if it's not rotated, it won't fit. So I'm going to hollow first in Chidu Box with a wall thickness of three. And this is sped up at 300%. It actually takes quite a while. I sped all these, these parts up. And then what I'm going to do is, and you can't see under, un, unfortunately, the secondary screen, it's showing that I'm slicing it as a photon file right now at 0.4 millimeter layer height. Now I'm saving it as that photon file. So I can load it into the photon validator afterwards. So even you see at 300%, look how slow it's writing the file. It takes quite a bit of time, but that's okay because we're testing hollowing. So this one is hollowed in Chidu Box, and I save it as Manticore hollowed by Chidu Box. And I saved it as a Photon file, the same name. Now we go into Formware, which is a paid software. I load it in the exact same way. I'm not, I don't want to change the orientation at all because obviously they, that might affect or create different islands. So they, in all the software, I have to load it in the STL the exact same way, which is what I did. No changes to the STL. And here... Once you hit a uh, support mode, then there's a button up top, which you saw me hit, which is hollow, which I did. Now, you can't see the drop down box, but I'm saving it as uh, hollowed by firmware as an STL. 
So I can bring it back into Chitterbox now and then slice it as a photon file, which so now you're going to see me. And again, you don't see the drop down box, the file I'm opening. You'll see when it loads in, though, is called uh, Manticore Body for Hollowing by Formware. And you see it's the exact same orientation. So now it is slicing up as a photon file, again, at the exact same settings as, as the one from Chitterbox. Now I'm saving it as the uh, Manticore Hollowed by Formware with a photon format. And again, this is at 500% speed. Sped it up even more. Now we go into Prusa. Now Prusa, when I dropped it in that orientation, it doesn't fit on the plate. The Prusa plate, I guess, is a little smaller. So I'm not changing the angle of the orientation at all. This is important. I'm only changing, uh, turning it, so to speak, the, uh, on the, uh, on the um, X, on the Z axis, sorry. I am not changing the orientation at all because again, that would affect the outcome. What I went there is you have to go to print settings and you have to turn off the generate supports and then you can hollow. When you go to hollow, in Prusa, the model disappears, which is a little disconcerting at first, but don't worry, it's just calculating, then it comes back like this. Uh, now let's double check it and make sure it actually got hollowed. So I'll drag the slider up. Um, and I'm doing that right now, dragging it down, sorry. You can see that it's hollowed nicely. So now I'm gonna export the plate as an STL, which is an option under the file, which I, unfortunately you can't see here. But exporting the plate as an STL, now I'm going to open that up in uh, Chitterbox. And you can see all I had to do was turn it. So I'm just going to turn it back now so it's oriented like the other ones. But again, the angles didn't change. So it shouldn't change in any way, shape, or form in the islands that were created or not created. So now I'm slicing it under the exact same conditions as the other two as a photon file. Saving it as a photon file. Now the next step from there, and the reason I'm saving all these as photon files, slicing them in Chitterbox and saving them as photon files is so that I can use the photon validator software. So unfortunately, because my screen capture only captures the active screen, I can't show you exactly what I wanted to here. So here I'm opening the file. You see this at 500% speed. This takes a while. It analyzes layer by layer and then picks out islands for you. Then there's a button at the top, which is not lit right now called fix, which lights up when the layers are done. You'll see it lights up, becomes selectable. So once that's done, you click on fix, it'll tell you how many island layers with islands there are. And you can't see it right here, so now I'm zooming in. So on the Chitterbox version, you see layers with islands, 411. Okay, and this, this also allows you to fix them, but we're not gonna talk about that now. I just wanna see how many islands it found. Now we go to the one with Formware and it's, it's from 411 down to 195. So you see Chitterbox was way worse at the hollowing process. And then here is under Prusa, only 174 layers with islands. So Prusa was by far to me the most accurate of the three. Uh, Formware was a close second, but considering you have to pay to get it, it shouldn't be second. And then lagging way, 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 way in the dust for hollowing uh, is Chitterbox. So the good news, I think, from, from these experiments is you can use a free software, Prusa Slicer, to hollow your models, and it seems to be uh, the best one of what I would call the big three. There are other softwares out there I didn't test that might be equally good uh, at hollowing, and maybe I'll test those in the future if people want, but I just wanted to test the three that I thought most people might be using, uh, and, and Prusa Slicer wins uh, hands down to me, Chitterbox being, you know, as we all know, I think, uh, pretty bad at it. So that's it. Hope you learned something. Uh, again, the Prusa Slicer is, is, is free software, so download it if you hollow any models. It's, it's a way better way to do it. Um, that's it. I, I, I might come back with some more tests on these three and maybe even add some other ones into the mix in the future if people want. But other than that, please like, please subscribe. Uh, hope you learned something today. Thanks, and happy 3D printing.